previous episodes, we looked at the Roberts Bridge Codex, a mid 14th century source that constitutes the earliest surviving keyboard music. Now we're going to explore the next major source of late medieval keyboard music. This comes from Italy and was rediscovered. It's a manuscript that had been lost and was rediscovered in 1939 in the communal library of Faenza, which is a small community not too far from Ferrara. And this gave the name to the codex, the Faenza Codex, compiled around 1430. So some 70 years after the previous music that we looked at in the Roberts Bridge Codex. And whereas the Roberts Bridge Codex is only two folios of music that survived because those two pages were used in the binding of another book, the Faenza Codex is a very large manuscript. It contains 48 pieces that are based on both secular and sacred models. The Faenza Codex contains our earliest liturgical music for the organ. It also includes many arrangements of vocal songs by leading composers of the time and of the previous century, including Francesco Landini, the great blind Florentine organist, who was one of the great virtuosi of our early history. Let's look at a vocal model that has been arranged in Faenza. This by the French composer Pierre de Moulin. And I want to illustrate some of the issues in performing this music today and ways we might program it to make it enjoyable and to help our modern audiences access it in a meaningful way. As you've noticed, a lot of our early repertoire comes from vocal originals, vocal models. We saw the motets by Philippe de Vitry in the Roberts Bridge Codex, and we're going to see a large number of vocal models in Faenza as well, including this arrangement of the ballade de ce faux français by Pierre de Moulin. So when we're first approaching this, it might seem a little bit boring, repetitive. The music in Faenza also preserves this slower moving left hand part with the more figurative right hand part. And I think there are several ways of approaching this programmatically. One, we might include this music with the vocal models or in a program not only of organ music, but a program of 15th century music generally, or even early music generally. And we might also incorporate it within, within a much larger, more eclectic solo organ performance which is something I do regularly. And as I've mentioned before, sometimes this is an opportunity to use high-pitched sounds that would never be featured on their own in the more standard organ repertoire. So we can try this with the Pierre de Moulin arrangement 
Uh, this normally would be sung by three singers, a cappella, and in the organ arrangement, we basically have two parts, the tenor of the original ballad, and then a decorated upper voice. So one thing I like to do is often use four foots or two foots. And if you have a large organ, such as the Fritz organ here, we can use the lower stops, but play up an octave because the range of these early pieces is usually such that they can go up or down an octave. Another way to diversify your registrations. So we could play it just on a four foot principle. Or we could play it on the eight foot octave, up an octave, to get a different timbre. So these are possibilities, so it would be possible to use a flute. So we could play it on the four foot Spitzflute, but up an octave. very charming and something that really brings out this musical style, makes it very special, and probably you wouldn't be using in any other type of program. A third way that you can program these early pieces is with a thematic idea. So you could have a theme to a program, say, uh, songs and dances of yore and include this, this would be a song that comes from a very uh, refined tradition of polyphonic vocal music. And you could even have uh, variations on other songs by later composers, uh, depending on the type of theme that you choose. These pieces are not very difficult technically, and they can also be abridged if you think they're too long. I want to speak a bit about this now since many of the arrangements in the Feinze Codex are of vocal originals in the form fix. This, uh, these vocal models that follow specific forms. And the ballad is in the form AAB. And the a music is repeated but with a different text. So it might not be that thrilling to perform both of the A sections in the organ version. And I think this is totally fine to just play the A section and the B section because the text would have provided the difference. Some people may suggest trying to ornament it the second time or play it differently, but remember this is already music that has been ornamented, it's stylized in the arrangement for keyboard, so I think that might distort a bit of the original intention. I'll now play the first section of De Sefold Pensée, the A section, and I'll only take the closed ending and then start the second section, the B section, so you can hear that transition. And this time I'll use the four foot flute, the Spitzflute, at written pitch. <laughs>
closed ending. And now the second part. the different rhythmic patterns with a nice clear touch yum ba ba bum bum ba ba bum 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 ba da dum bum 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 there's quite a bit of variety in these little figures and this is what gives the intabulation such charm which of course is not in the original all this decoration and I think that the touch should just bring it out uh, very very gently and in uh, correspondence to whatever type of sound you're using. This is a courtly song, uh, this crazy idea, de ce fleur pensé. Uh, crazy idea is usually related to love, and you want to bring out that, that courtly character through a nice touch. There's some very nice rhythmic changes at the cadences that help to slow it down a little bit. Uh, as you heard in the close ending, so a little bit different. We've been going yum da dum bum ba da dum bum 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 ba da dum bum, and then we get a different rhythmic pattern there, which which helps. And at, similarly, at the very end of the third section of the ballad, we get a similar slowing down type of figuration. I don't think we need to do a lot through Rallentandi or Ritterdandi. I think it's written into the music, maybe just a slight feeling of release at the final cadence. This is only one of many ways to render this ballad from the Faenza Codex, but I think it's also important to remember the original vocal structure with the A section repeated using a different text. Perhaps that's not necessary in a performance of the organ work since there's not a different text and the superiors, the top voice, has already been ornamented as part of the arranging process. <laughs> 